The year was 1812. It was a warm and humid day when all of a sudden General Andrew Jackson received word that he would be drafted for war. He had heard that it was a conflict fault between the United States and England. Andrew had heard that in an attempt to ease tensions between the two countries through Jay's Treaty, the abdication of Napoleon, and the Embargo Act of 1807. However, due to England's continuous seizing of ships, blockades, and the kidnapping of American sailors, as well as conflicts with the Native Americans, America decided to go to war with England. Andrew knew that he had to break the news to his wife, Rachel, and his 11 children. However, he did not know how. After much contemplation, he decided to sit them down during dinner and tell them the news. His wife and children were devastated when they heard that he might have to leave for a couple of years. Their hearts broke at the thought of him leaving. A few weeks later, he left. A few months later, Rachel and his family received their first letter. August 19th, 1812. My dear Rachel, today I fought in the first battle. The British troops clearly have an advantage against us with about 140,000 Navy men and 500 warships. We only have about a dozen. However, there is hope for us. We have loyal colonists. The battle has... The battle was between the USS Constitution and HMS Geary, occurred in Nova Scotia. Our troops have removed the crew and set Geary on fire before returning to Boston with news of the victory. This was an incredible morale boost for the Americans. These past few months have felt like years without you. I can't wait to see you again. Love always, Andrew. A couple months later, Rachel received another letter from her beloved husband. The letter stated, April 27th, 1813. Dear my love, the second battle <laughs> the second battle occurred today. Canada has been invaded. General William Henry Harrison and I had gone back to the Northwest Territory after hearing the news of the invasion of Canada. During the battle, we discovered that the British have allied with Tecumseh However, despite these changes, we were still able to capture and burn the town of York. I also fought in the Battle of Beaver Dam that occurred a few days ago. I feel very proud of myself. We marched from Fort George and attempted to surprise a British outpost at Beaver Dams. It was unsuccessful. However, we still have hope. I am missing you now more than ever. My arrival back home can't come soon enough. Your darling husband, Andrew. Just when Rachel was beginning to get deeply saddened at the months of separation from her husband, she received another letter. Just when Rachel was beginning to just get when Rachel was beginning to get deeply saddened at the months of separation from her husband, she received another letter. Dear my darling, she September tenth, eighteen thirteen. Dear my darling Rachel, today I fought my hardest in the Battle of Lake Erie. The British troops came down through the Northwest Territory and captured the Great Lakes. I tried to help Commander Oliver Perry find ships, guns, and men to man the vessels. Luckily, the British had the same issues. In total, nine vessels of ours de have defeated six British vessels. This battle has ensured our control of the lake for the rest of the war. Once Lake Erie was captured, William Henry Harrison and I took the troops back to the Northwest Territory. My heart is with you and the children. Love, Andrew. Good. After that letter, Rachel did not receive another one. Rachel had not heard from Andrew in about a year. She was beginning to worry whether he had forgotten about her or even worse, passed away. However, a letter came. The letter stated, March 27, 1814. Rachel, we have allied with the Cherokees and the British have allied with the Creek Indians. This battle ended the Creek War since my troops won the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. And as always... My heart is with you and the children. Your love, Andrew. After receiving the fourth letter, Rachel was relieved that her husband was still alive. A few months later, the fifth letter arrived. August 24th, 1814. My dear Rachel, we have lost the battle. The British have won victory in the Battle of Bladensburg, Washington, D.C. is now open to the British, to the British invasion. It seems that some of our soldiers are losing faith. Although we have faced many hardships after the battle, we were able to defend the Baltimore Harbor. Through the use of Fort McHenry, it played a vital role in the defense of Baltimore Harbor. The, this strategic victory has kept Baltimore free. This battle is a turning point. I can see things beginning to look better. 
Hopefully I'll be home soon. I'm sorry I've been so distant lately. Love always, Andrew. The morality boost was tremendous for America as it was their victory in the Fort McHenry battle. Rachel Jackson heard her friends discussing how the band created a song called The Star-Spangled Banner. Although Rachel was happy and proud of her husband, the long years of separation <laughs> led her to have severe depression. Then two days later, Rachel decides that she has had enough. She decides to send back a letter stating the following. Dear Andrew, I'm sick and tired of you. Dear Andrew, I'm sick and tired of you sending me letters talking only about you, your troops, and the battles. You never ask for my well-being. Every time you send me a letter, you only mention me once. Once. You should just be a general forever. You are an unfit husband, and you have left me alone with our 11 rambunctious kids that have no concern for my well-being after you left. God is commanding me to move on. Farewell, your ex-wife. As Rachel was packing her bags and deciding where to go, her friends came over and informed her about the meeting that was taking place in Connecticut about the ongoing war, the political problems in the country, and the collapsing economy. The newspaper called it the Hartford Convention. As much as Rachel was happy that the war was seeming to come to an end, she was more focused on leaving. Meanwhile, British and American representatives met together at Ghent, Belgium, to discuss the war and what they should do. They created conditions such as that all conquered territory was to be returned, and commissions were planned to settle the boundary of the United States and Canada. However, both the British and American troops were unaware of the Treaty of Ghent, leading to the Battle of North New Orleans. At the camp, Andrew was getting ready for his final battle, the Battle of New Orleans, when a letter came addressed from Rachel. He opened it with much excitement and curiosity, only to find the devastating news. He sobbed and sobbed, but got himself together in realization that he had to keep fighting. The next day, the battle began. The Battle of New Orleans was a bloody battle and had a tremendous impact to Americans. The war boosted American self-confidence and opened the door to territorial expansion, shaped the political landscape until the Civil War, and marked the birth of the American military establishment. Although the War of 1812 had came to an end, some of the immediate causes of the war were the economic situations and war hawks. War hawks were people who strongly supported war. A major political consequence of the War of 1812 was the seizement of the Federal Party. Their opposition to the commencement of the war and their contemplation of succession at the Hartford Convention angered many Americans who viewed the Federalists as unpatriotic. Nationalism and patriotism was as strong as ever. Since the war had come to an end, Andrew finally decided that it is time to return home to see his family and search for Rachel. When he arrived home, he was expecting to be met with his entire family and hopefully his wife, but instead he saw eleven graves lined up beside the house. Upon his rampage to find out what happened, he came across a neighboring farmer's house where he then explained to Andrew that after Rachel left the kids, he discovered that they starved to death and wanted to give them a proper burial. Determined to avenge his children's death, he scoured the land and seized his wife's horse and another horse he didn't recognize next to a house. Upon much suspicion, he decided to venture inside and found Rachel with Thomas Jefferson. With much anger, he stormed inside the room. 